Honorable Vice President of India to address the audience. Very frankly, I do not possess the credentials to perform the duty I am doing at the moment. Ever since I became a member of parliament in 1989, it was my dream come true when I came to interact physically, not virtually, with Dr. Sa at India International Center. Never ever thought in my life I will be so privileged, honored, to secure a moment ever to chase that I'll be doing what I have done a while ago. Distinguished author, Padam Vibhushan, Dr. Karan Singh, his family members, members of the trust, distinguished friends, and his admirers. Sri Sunil Kumar Gupta, Secretary to the Honorable Vice President of India. Friends, at the outset, I join you all and many more across the globe in wishing Dr. Karan Singh a very happy birthday as he enters 93rd year. Dr. Singh enters 93rd year of an eventful life marked with sublimity, simplicity, disarming modesty, and captivating elegance. Dr. Singh is a shining example of how age is just a number. For a well-disciplined, thinking and vibrant mind with positivity ever being fulcrum of thought process. He has been infallible on this touchstone, always positive, emanating positive vibes. An extraordinary scholar who synergizes deep knowledge with enormous huge personal experience of decades that's more than my age. Born a prince, he relinquished the elitist image and adapted himself to a democratic order of which to our good fortune he remains a reading light. Friends at Chairman Rajasabha, I miss him. His presence both in Lok Sabha and Rajasabha was highly impactful. His presence was failed. When I had the great good fortune to dine with him at his residence, I conveyed to him, sir, I will feel your absence, and that will be very painful for me. And that will justify some of the transgressions which enormously talented people here, particularly Ponji, may not easily approve. But a good lawyer is one, I claim to be one. We have a younger one here never misses an opportunity. I will do that, even at the cost of getting some censor. By versatility and genius, Dr. Singh is uniquely, imminently positioned to dwell deep into the gems of Munda Kopnishad that seek to enrich our mind with knowledge so that we liberate ourselves of errors and veils of ignorance. Sir, indeed an honor 
to formally release your book, Mundak Upanishad, The Bridge to Immortality. I highly commend the book for wider circulation, dissemination, for welfare of humanity. It's worth everyone's time. Friends, when you attend a function of such a legend, you have to engage in due diligence and homework. It may not be my ordinary subject, but then we can always imbibe by putting in some effort. The lessons we draw from Upanishads are eternal. And finding as I do in my difficult position, I can reflect with firm conviction, contemporaneously relevant as never before. I see the relevance more as I sit in a chair. That certainly is not very comfortable. For the simple reason, you expect rational approach from those who drive their actions by rationality, you end up finding they are not their usual self when they are in their theater. Opnishas take us to wholesome path of order, truth, and moral values. Mundak Opnishad is of particular significance to us from one of its part, mantra, we have taken Satya Mev Jati. The motto is written below the Ashoka emblem, which is our state emblem. Friends, it is my constitutional duty and honor to sit below the hallowed emblem as Vice President and Chairman of Rajya Sabha and be in the service of the nation. without fear of cont contradiction and with deep conviction. I assert, Dr. Singh, during his long, illustrious parliamentary career, exemplified constitutional virtuosity that calls for regulation and emulation. I commend every parliamentarian to reflect on the best parliamentarian of a particular year to work in favor of the nation, ignoring parties and stance. Dr. Singh reflects the essence of our founding fathers of the Constitution. They evolved Constitution through dialogue, debate, discussion, and deliberation. Sir, you are aware, more than anyone else, Constituent Assembly members traversed highly contentious issues, divisive issues, including of language. And all they did without there being a single disturbance, single disruption. No one came to the well, and they gave us this great document, the Constitution. I had spoken of transgressions. It is justifiable. I am before a man who more than my age has set high example of public life behavior. Contemporary scenario in the campus of democracy today is worrisome. Disruption and no decorum is order of the day. I call upon people in particular intelligentsia, media and youth to generate mass awareness to contain this riding of our parliamentary system. Time for such moment has come so that we pridely, with pride, we become members of the largest democracy, mother of democracy on earth. 
it is for us to ensure that the world looks up to our parliament as most disciplined, articulate, and strongest legislative form of debate. Undoubtedly, and I no doubt, our people are concerned and anguished with projection of disruptors of proceedings, shouters of slogans, practitioners of India cross conduct, throwing of papers and whatnot. Can we sanctify it? Can we approve of it? Can we continue to observe silence at such kind of sliding of our democracy before our own eyes? I am before a man who has indicated order and truth be intrepid. We cannot afford to do that. Our parliamentarians need to exemplify conduct which can motivate, inspire, energize our people and young minds and give direction to the country. Friends, Bharat is in Amritkar. The gentleman, the author, Padam Vibhushan Awardi, respected in the country and outside, known for his massive contributions in all fields as a statesman, as diplomat, as parliamentarian, as politician, as someone in command for executive actions in the governments of several prime ministers. It is his presence that makes me courageous enough to indicate we are the most functional democracy on the planet as of date. Bharat in Amritkar is setting global discourse on many issues. All Indians are related. The country is on the rise as never before. And its upward growth trajectory is unstoppable. We are certainly on our way to 2047. Young minds who are before us, some of us may not be around at that time. But the warriors of 2047 who are in their 20s and 30s must not get despair from us. They must get positive directional approach from us. How ironical, how painful, how excruciating pain people like him can feel. The world is applauding our historic accomplishments and functional, vibrant democracy. Some amongst us, including parliamentarians, in overdrive are engaged in thoughtless, unfair denigration of our well-nurtured democratic values. How do we justify such wanton orchestration of factually untenable narrative? and mark the timing, this unwholesome, unwholesome misadventure. India is having a moment of glory, being president of G20, and there are people outside from the country working in overdrive to denigrate us. Such misplaced campaign mode to taint and tarnish our parliament and constitutional entities is too serious and exceptional, exceptional to be ignored and countenanced. Friends, no political strategy or partisan stance can justify compromising our nationalism and democratic values. I am before a noble soul. My silence on this misadventure if I observe silence on this orchestration by a member parliament outside the country, which is ill-premised, unwholesome, motivated, I will be on the wrong side of constitution. It will be constitutional culpability and outrage of my oath. How can I sanctify a statement that 
mics in Indian parliament are put off? How dare anyone pick up courage to say so? Has there, has there been ever illustration? Yes, we did have a dark chapter of our political history. Proclamation of emergency. The darkest period which any democracy can suffer. The Indian democratic polity has now matured. There can be no repeat of that. Anyone who says so inside the country or outside, that in the Indian parliament mics are put off, is an affront to the nation. Imagine this being done after having held the floor for nearly 50 minutes. Such kind of wanton misadventure to run down our democratic fabric and values cannot be countenanced. I call upon everyone, intelligentsia, media, and youth who are warriors of 2047, rise to the occasion, expose these forces, neutralize them. I am not a stakeholder in politics. I don't engage in partisan stance. But I do believe in constitutional duty, and I know fear cannot dominate my mind after I have kept Dr. Singh on my right side for so long. If I observe silence, the vast majority of people who believe in this nation would be silenced forever. We cannot allow such kind of narrative to gain currency and momentum by those elements who wish to antidote our rising growth. Tell me, friends, what can be more distance from truth than this? I preside Rajya Sabha. Let someone come forward and say, my was put off. There is a fullest freedom of expression as per constitution. And no Democracy in the world can rival that. Blossoming democracy at all years. Which country can claim to have a multi layer democracy at panchayat level, municipal level, state level, and central level? And different, diversified. You run down our judiciary on a foreign soil. Where on the planet your judiciary that acts with lightning speed? For one number of instances, there may be issues which we have to iron out. But our judiciary is made with the most brilliant minds in the world. We have achieved justice with that kind of exposure. In democracy, there will always be issues in doctrine of separation of powers to be settled, resolved. But we, who are at the apex level of these institutions, cannot be complainants. We cannot hold out agreements. We have to find resolution. And that is why the kind of mental thinking that has been given, that your aim has to be what? To secure welfare of all. Friends, I said I'll be engaging in a brief translation. I want media to be fair. I will scale it down. Please don't be fair, but don't be unfair. I will go still a step down. Don't be so unfair that you set afloat untruths to run down a constitutional authority. Sir, you know the importance of committees. You have been part of many, both as a minister and otherwise. Every committee is serviced by his staff. There will be five, six people. I got input from a number of chairmen and members. The Mr. Chairman 
do something affirmatively so that we improve our productivity. So what I do? The human resource attached to the committee, I sharpen it. I put in research-oriented people. I put knowledgeable people so that they can help the committee members optimize their output, their performance. In the process, I appointed some. An IS officer, an Indian Foreign Service officer, a man who has credentials of LLM, and a narrative is set afloat. First by a newspaper, then by channels. Bajar, chairman has appointed his own members to the committee. Now, would anyone for heaven's sake check up? Committee is of members of parliament. It is their exclusive domain. I am terribly upset and concerned. What our editors are doing? I have directed my office to get in touch with the editors of newspapers. To channel heads. Can you engage into such kind of narrative which is based on falsehood? And you don't care, you want to check up? Here is a man who is acting because chairman and members of the committee have come to me. They have indicated to me, iron out these things. I am doing it after multi-layered deliberative sessions. And suddenly every channel, a democrat, sir, is so to be made out of this court. You have given me the courage to speak out my minds. I will not take more on this. Sir, I have friends. Ponji is one of them. I was really elected when uh, in a literary function I had the occasion to participate and he gave his discourse. It was a moment of great uh, pride for me when Dr. Saab in a virtual mode was there to give the discourse and the entire cultural city of Kolkata was in high attention and every word which he spoke was impactful. But sir, where is the genius that doesn't come to my rescue? Where are those giants in the profession, journalism, in public life, who don't speak out? I need your support. I am sure this will come. Sir, I wouldn't digress any further and come to the point. We all must give standing ovation to Dr. C. <laughs> Sir, I'm a selfish man. We need Dr. Singh for many years to come. We need Dr. Singh to be in good health and happiness because he is one of the very few who can energize, inspire, and motivate by his thought process. I have no doubt that Dr. Singh will continue to bless me. He has been here while every vice president has been. I should be vacating this house in few months. I had sought a promise from him at his residence that when I enter those premises, the new Prashtrapati Nivas, he will be there to bless me. And I know a man at his level is not required to articulate my words, but all that I have said before you, indicating my serious concerns I can tell you, I am his Eklavi. I do it with his constructive sanction. I am grateful to the organizers for affording us this very great opportunity in the honor of a great man whose discourses 
and writing server there. Sir, lastly, when I was governor of the state of West Bengal, I used to say one thing jokingly. That in Kuan Prega Kuropati, there are four lifelines. One can phone a friend, one can split two to As governor of West Bengal, I have no lifeline. Sir, as governor of West Bengal, I could have had some lifeline. As chairman of Rajya Sabha, I have none. I, therefore, am fully aware of what Sansar TV is doing in respect to you. And only this afternoon, we had a session how to put it at a much higher pedestal. And my top three officials, including the secretary to the presi vice president, senior vice president, we deliberated that we have to be different, emanate a thought process of people possessed of sublimity, knowledge, and about whom all, only you can say one thing. We are ever in salutation of you. Thank you.